Hello everybody. Today is a special day, not just because what is happening astrologically. This is August 2nd, 2022. Here in Colombia, I have the honor to sit with a very interesting person that I met him three weeks ago. And since I saw him, I understood that this is, I felt this person has something different. And today we are going to discuss and to introduce some futurist topics. Usually I'm speaking on astrology, through astrology, what seems to happen in humanity, where we are going against collective. But this person is actually building this and is young in the right generation. And I want to say hello to Prince Cup. Mm -hmm. Hi. Hello, hello. <laughs> nice to see you, Osha. We've been planning to do this for some time. I'm finally glad that we can sit down and actually have this moment. Um, you know, we talk a lot and I'd like to be able to bring them to these kinds of conversations because I think we both stem from that same energy of creation and energy to be able to have, you know, this positive energy. And I think that that's something that the world doesn't have enough of. And the fact that we can bring you into this kind of interaction between the two of us will bring some positive energy back to your life and it will even make it more concrete, right? So just to bring the bomb before we are going to tell anything, mm -hmm. what you are doing, you are building virtual cities, no? Yeah. So, um, so what we actually have is a virtual city, right? So uh, to kind of bring you up to speed, um, you know, we all, we all hear this idea about a, about a future, about like heaven, about this, you know, politicians always try to, or religious people always try to tell us of this better point in the future, right? And I, you know, I, I grew up from nothing. So I grew up in Kenya. And as I kept growing up, eventually I realized that, you know, like, why wait for some other thing to build this future? Why wait for somebody to promise us this? And, and they don't deliver on it most of the time, right? So what I started doing was working towards that. And initially, it was from the idea of like, oh, you hear about global warming, you hear about like population increase, you hear about all these doom and gloom kind of ideas and I, I i sat down and i was like man what am i gonna do with my life and i decided that how old are you now uh, i'm 26 26 well i'm turning 20, 26 this month oh, so amazing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, right so um so basically i i decided to um, initially, the idea starts off with terraforming the Sahara Desert, so growing trees there so that it allows the CO2 to be sucked from the atmosphere to repair the ozone layer because trees would be able to suck the CO2 and give oxygen back. Um, and then from there, I started thinking more as the population is going to increase, why not build new cities in those places? But before you are going to all those details, you were inspired to go to the future with your vision starting from nothing okay. living in kenya yeah. telling me that you felt sort of lost like not having resources suddenly you are bringing the vision of the future humanity yeah <laughs> that is pretty much aligned with what i'm seeing foreseeing forward mm -hmm. sometimes people sometimes people that are following astrology expecting that all those changes will happen in one two years those are much bigger changes and you are building it through the visions mm -hmm. uh, what is the what is the big vision to where we are going as society to right to your project uh, how you see it i think it's more that um uh, so our virtual city serves more as a simulation right and what i mean by that is that we have inventors come work in our city to build products that we can then solve some sort of problem in the world with so why would they come into our city because it's a virtual city we allow them to build these ideas they have in a virtual environment where they can test these ideas see how they would act in a real world environment because we can model that in our virtual city and once they have perfected their inventions they can then bring those into the real world and solve the problems of their current cities so our city isn't just to build it somewhere in Africa in the Sahara Desert it's actually a model of a city that allows us to then look at the cities we're in and say how do we want to improve our city right now we can reference this virtual city and see the technologies working in it um, and bring those technologies to the real world cities and improve our current cities so it 
it makes it real. It makes it so that it's not, oh, some city in Dubai is doing something cool. It, it makes you think, hey, um, I can go into the city and see these technologies that have been built there. How can I apply those into the current city that I love, that I'm coming from, where my kids will grow up, where my grandparents are, where my parents are? How can I improve this city right now and make it a lot better, a lot better for them to live in. Um, this whole concept about smart cities, about the future, it's all vague until you can visit a world and visualize and see it and experience it, walk around, have food for free, and, and that is different. It's all the metaverse that yeah. not right now become very, very popular, popular yeah. to speak about. And mm -hmm. the old generation, at least my generation and above, is like condemning it, like, wow, they are going to take all what we acquire to be lifestyle and then going and put people in computers and uh, VR glasses and all this is exciting at the same time mm -hmm. how many possibilities can appear mm -hmm. and I see you sort of an artist you know beyond even what you are creating and the team that you build that is impressive by all the things and the graphs and the charts that I'm seeing around you here People are believing in this project. People are investing in a lot of big talents that are working in you. But I just wanted to bring the essence of a person like you. First of all, even to inspire some guys that are watching this channel from yeah. India, from Africa, that are looking for opportunity because now the world is belong to air element who has the ideas, who has the vision beyond just the, who acquires the physics. Mm -hmm. How could, I don't know, just inspire, inspire someone with how you started and what, what you have that other couldn't see or, or maybe other have and they just need inspiration. Yeah, um, man, it took a long time. And um, you see, the funny thing is, um, I don't pay the people who work on the project now. I used to pay people. So I've been working on this for eight years. And I used to pay people. Actually, it's more eight, nine-ish around there. But I, at the beginning, I was working at a factory. And I was, I was teaching myself how to program. Um, and so before I could make a program a salary, I was first teaching, you know, just kind of working at a factory. And even then, that's a whole other story that's kind of fascinating. But um, when I was paying people, they they were in it for the wrong reasons. Now, when I said, um, you know, I kind of just talked to one of my teammates and I was like, hey, man, you know, I think we built a lot of really cool products. We have products that we built. So I'm not coming here to tell you, hey, this is a cool concept of a city that would be nice to have. Um, I don't really believe in that. I'm an engineer. I think that the way we create the future, the way we live in the future is by creating it. So that is the only way you can be able to exist in a future where you you want to, to live in, right? Like it's not magic. So um, I, I, I kind of think of it as we, we in the present with the skills we have, how can we come together in one place and build and define that future? The city allows us to do that. It allows us to visualize it and define this is the archetypal city we would like to all live in. Now we can figure out how to take our current cities to now start modeling that city to looking more like that one. What you share, share something about what isn't working right right now in society and what would you expect to see in the physical new cities after what creates now in the, st the simulation mm -hmm. to be a better place to live? What, you, what, what features are about to be added now? Yeah, so um, the, there's, there's, there's a single fundamental thing about the city. Um, and it's, it's that, you know, basic needs should be free. Um, and I'm not talking about money as in UBI or anything like that. I, I literally mean that food, shelter, you know, infrastructure, housing, um, energy, and knowledge should be free. So those four things are the core tenets of what um, what I what I put into this city, right? Because um, when I went, you know, when I was growing up, I had I didn't have any of those things. So when I'm in a position where I can work on something that can be a better future for others, I want them to have the basic needs given to them because that allows you to not 
suffer, to struggle, to not live in this kind of survival mentality, now you can start thinking more about, okay, I live in a society, what's wrong with our social systems? Why do we have to kill other people for small imaginary pieces of land when we're so far past that? Like we're all on this giant rock hurling through space around a fireball. How haven't we figured out that we're all together in this and we should all define a better future with better social systems that allow us to all thrive. In 2012, this is exactly the word that you are ending, thrive. The movie Thrive in 2012 was exactly illustrating yeah, this. <laughs> and you just say, yeah, this is the concept of how if the society will be healed mm -hmm. and the money will not be concentrated just by 1%, mm -hmm. and it will be technology that will allow more transparency and more efficiency of uh, distribution of resources. Mm -hmm we can improve and give to people the, the space to create and out of survival mm -hmm. uh, situations. Yeah, um, fun fact. So the, the way you actually do that, um, the way we define it in our city is that when you come into the city, you see um, what we define as non-sentient machines. These are robots that don't have consciousness. They're not they're not like you and I. They don't have the ability to think and be conscious in the moment. Um, these robots are the ones which perform all the tasks for extracting, processing, and utilizing natural or artificial resources to build the products and services people need. Mm -hmm. Now, to get to that point, we have to build all that automation, right? Now, with the blockchain and with AI and with all these other new technologies such as VR, um, it allows us to actually define that future and, and work together on it, right? See, in the past, in 2012, for example, blockchain and Bitcoin was just young, so it, it wasn't as pervasive in society. So it wasn't, um, it wasn't easy for people to actually think about it or talk about it. Like, you know, now we can talk about Bitcoin and everyone knows about Bitcoin, right? But man, many people know about Bitcoin, but many people don't know even how to approach it and are still in the belief that the banking system and the structure of what they've built for the last generation will continue. This is a frustration. Mm -hmm. But okay, just yeah, but that's, that's a good thing though, because that, that shows that there's a barrier to entry, right? Now, for people like I who are more tech savvy, that barrier to entry is really good for us because we can leverage that. We leverage our skills, our technologies, and we understand that. Now, for the next phase of humanity, you can kind of see how things are breaking down. For that next phase, what we're trying to figure out is how do we make that barrier to entry low or non-existent, which means that we meet our users where they are, yeah. right? People are familiar with games, people are familiar with how to yes. play these kinds of um, social systems, right? So let's make it super simple, right? Yeah. I hate signing up for apps, I hate when it takes a long time for me to fill out this form, let's remove that. Let's just give you a simple application which you can use to log into all these other things. When it comes to the concept of Bitcoin, for example, like virtual money, how can we circumvent the need for centralized, you know, finance, right? So this kind of brings in the idea of DeFi, but I think even the way DeFi has been done uh, is a bit centralized. So what do you care about? You care about food, right? You care about where you stay and those basic needs, how can you pay for those without having to go back into the old system? And, and <laughs> you know, right. So that's why it's really important for us to focus on the basic needs, right? By, by being able to solve um, not only the automation of the production and distribution of basic needs, um, by us also just having our city focus on solving those issues about distribution, about manufacturing, it allows us to create products that we can then sell to cities. This allows, see, the only way these cities would buy or, or organizations would buy or people would buy products from us is by using our token. See, the first thing that people asked me was, um, how can I exchange our token to other currencies, right? So now they're trying to go back to the dollars and the euros and and then I sat down and I thought so sad. Right. I'm seeing like the last going year back into the system and again. all this liquidity and what happened in the last year that people oh Bitcoin crash and everything and like if I just would convert back to dollar. See, I agree with you. And I think the thing, you know, we have to kind of share is that um 
we have to you, uh, let me let me introduce a certain concept. It's called a social contract. You see, um, countries are built on a social contract. It's a contract between the people in the country. Uh, you pay your taxes. That's a contract you have with the government. You have a contract with other people. Like we'll participate in voting. We won't. You know, we'll follow these laws. Those are social contracts you are part of in your country. Now, what we have to define is different contracts with each other. We have to say, hey, um, as a restaurant, I will accept Bitcoin so you don't have to go back to turning it into dollars. Now, Bitcoin isn't the best example because it's not as stable. But when you think about something like, um, you know, DAI or USDT or USDC, though I don't like USDC or USDT for specific reasons, um, but it's the idea of having this the, removing the need for people to have to exchange it back to the you know yes, common that, currencies, yeah, right? Yeah. But you can see how the banking systems and the the previous because the previous systems are not just going to let you come in and make them obsolete, right? So now what you what we have to figure out is how do we how do we go to them with a good deal, right? Because it's all about making deals with these kinds of people these these people who are at the top one percent who own a lot. They own a lot of armies, they own a lot of resources. How can we talk to them? How can we be like, hey, if you help us, no, not even if you help us, don't help us, we'll help you be a lot more efficient. Now, by them using our systems, right? Now you can see Chase and these banks are starting to use Bitcoin, but people have to realize that that's a centralized, you're still going back to their system, you know? So we have to collectively agree um, that we want to do something different. And that brings in the concept of a social contract. So our entire city is built on that idea. Everyone in our city has a social contract. Like literally when you sign in, you sign a contract that says, I believe in this city and I will do everything to make this city not only come to life, but also protect it because this is something I believe in. This is, you know, I, I haven't experienced the future where I can walk into it and there's, there's a group of people diligently working to make the future a better place and they're not being paid like for example paco is the guy who designs the city designs the virtual models he's bringing it into unreal engine 5. i, I don't pay that guy and that guy is doing it because he has a kid who he wants to live in a better future the first time i met him i was like look paco i'm not going to tell you how to create the city I, I have no idea how to create a city i'm a software engineer <laughs> what, what i can tell you is i'll give you the resources the models anything you need to be able to design the city that you would want your family to live in 10 20 years from now and that makes it closer to his heart because it's not some boss telling him to make some city for him. Yes. He's making it it's because beyond money. It, it's beyond money, right? So that's where we want to get to. We want to get to the point where we look at each other and we're like, you're a human. I'm a human, man. I it's eat food. It's all beyond money. Yeah, right? So now that's, that's... Because if I pay you to do something, then it becomes about the money. But if we collectively agree... I will do my part to make sure this organization keeps improving and keeps growing and you will use your skills to build the products that will allow people to visualize what we're creating here together. That's a social contract. We both came to an agreement. We said, hey, I'll do this, you'll do that. And we worked on it together. And then there was a few other people who saw what he did and they're like, wow, that's amazing. That's what you guys are working on. Can we join? And they joined and, and that's how we grew. And that's how we grew to, you know, over a hundred people in, in, in just a few weeks. I've been working on this for eight years and I, I barely share it because I'm an engineer. I'm not a marketer. As much as I can, like, do you know social media stuff I, I i don't i love to create i love to create quality i like to create value and, and for that this is amazing to create and to create value and we are entering to the era of internet of value the web 3 yeah. things and it's all about information that gives value because when we become conscious mm -hmm. <laughs> this is like we are we are living entering to an air element consciousness in humanity that is beyond what you acquire, what you're holding in the physics is about how much information and ability to create out of our humanitarian ability mm -hmm. that machine alone cannot do. Mm -hmm. And seeing a person like you that looks like a machine, <laughs> strong and vital, mm -hmm. in the right age, from the right generation, with what I know in astrology from 96. Mm -hmm. 96. Mm -hmm. And having this vision of looking on a future that 
I asked you already, when you are seeing the ear, by your vision, the ear that such a project mm -hmm. to be a real, accessible to children, mm -hmm. when you told me that you see it for future? Um, it was like 2015. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I agree because this is the next generation, 30 years, 30 years ahead from Saturn return, that is exactly 30 years. Mm -hmm. And with all the changes that should collapse, first of all, in this decade from the old, of the old system, and we will have time of Uranus six years until 2030 in Gemini, we'll change all the contracts and all the way we're communicating. We will need to learn more abilities. So it's all brings the alignment to the path of your vision that I can see you already there and like to bring you like in 2022 front of camera when things are just a spark of idea. It's very inspiring. Yeah, man, I'm not coming here to just say about an idea. It's something that, um, how, do, how do I put it? Um, it's something that like, I think a lot of people have kind of lost faith in, in leaders, right? Because leaders come and they tell you, Oh hey, I can I can do this, right? I can I can create these policies to help your taxes. I can you know help you have free healthcare or whatever. They'll try to sell you these ideas uh, on social media. They'll tell you, oh, follow me because I'm a guru and like I'll teach you like four hour work week and you you know like. But the thing is, um, I want to just come and show you value. I want to come to you and be like, hey, here's something valuable. I have took the time to create and put together. Now it's not even me coming to you saying that. It's a, a, it's a hundred plus people coming and saying, hey, we have collectively worked on this and we'll keep improving it and this is our promise to you. We, 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 you have no obligation to join us. You, you, you can choose not to join us. You can choose to just be like, oh, yeah, those guys are working on it and that's cool. Um, and then you'll go back to your cubicle job and your you know, like corporation, whatever, and you'll go back to that that kind of life, but you'll always know, after you've heard me talk about this, you'll know that there's people out there who are diligently working towards a better future. And not just a small kind of better future, but significantly better. You actually hit on it when you said um, that the goal is to have it ready by 2050. It's to build this city. Like the way the city is designed is that by 2050, this is the city we want. Now, all the years before that, all the technologies will develop and sell to these other cities are to improve them, to bring them with us, right? Because we're, we're not, you know, we're not going to be like Dubai. We're not going to be like these other cities, these futuristic cities in the world where we only develop it for our own small country and small people. We're saying, hey, this is a decentralized city because it's on the internet. Anyone can access it, right? Um, now, all the good things that come from that city, all the value that comes from that city is from the people in the current cities right now. So there's an incentive, right? So how people can interact with this built city right. that you are going to start selling like apartments in the virtual city that will be like your taboo for the physical for, one? For the physical one? So we actually have a product for that. So one of the products is that um, it's called Blah. It's called Bringing Love and Hope. And what essentially it does, it allows architects to design houses for such a city, right? And what these architects will eventually be able to do is sell those designs to people who want to build those houses in the like real NFT. life. Yeah, like NFTs, right? So yeah, we do tie it to NFTs and these technologies. Um, but, you know, to just kind of make it simple, it was the idea that imagine a Pinterest for architects and for you, somebody who wants to build a house. So let's say you have an interior of a house you want to remodel, you come to this platform and you see what people think the kind of house you would live in that would bring you love and hope. Literally, the product is called bringing love and hope. Where do you want your love and hope to be? It's in your house. So we're not just thinking about this lofty idea about skyscrapers or things like that. It's it's more down to earth. We, we, we're more humble because we, we, we're humans, man. We're, we're not, we're not like as much as we, we do stem from higher, you know, higher forms of life, um, we're still in this formal biological form. And, and I think with that, I, I still care about love and hope. I want to have love in my house. I want to have hope in my house. I want you, when you come to my house, you're, you're filled with those kinds of positive energy, not a sad, drab box house. It's beautiful, man. You are so in the future, even by listening. And as we are speaking now, this is a very rare transit in sky, Mars, Uranus, and North Node. And I, yesterday I told you, it's August 1st. We need to do this. Yeah. <laughs> this just to bring this seed in the air, whatever, someone should, should hear it anytime in the future. Mm -hmm. 
but because it's in Taros, it's something that's related to Earth right now. And by the way, I just heard today that scientists seeing that the Earth in July 29th completed, com the day was less than 24 hours. Mm -hmm. uh, and it could be, uh, ne never mind. Anyhow, there are explanations that the Earth is changing, the polar changing, everything. How, what would you say to the viewers mm -hmm. to to improve our current situation that we are seeing wars happening, still we are ahead of destructions and the fall of different structures that we were adoring and seeing for granted for generation. Before we are interacting with a vision to come, still people need to pay for their basic needs, people are struggling, people, young people living in cities that are very expensive, uh, unemployment, uh, restriction of human rights, etc. As a creator mind, empower, uh, em, how to say, empowering leader for your team, what step, what recommendation mm -hmm. to be detached from the drama changes that we are seeing right now happening with leadership around the world? Yeah, um, I actually have uh, a good answer for that. Uh, it's, how, it's how I started on this journey. So in, initially you asked me, how, how did you go from, you know, being a kid who's from nowhere, who, you know, um, like I'm not much into um, uh, like being too public. So how did I go from like being, being a nobody and I'm still a nobody, right? No one knows me. No one here will know me, right? And, and the cool thing is that um, I was, I, was at, I think I was 16 and I was getting ready for college and I started thinking what I wanted my life to be. And I, I then felt like, okay, what, what am I made of? I'm made of life. Shouldn't I align myself with a cosmic power? The cosmic power should be life. What does life want? Life wants to grow, expand, and, and keep developing further. What is stopping it from that? Well, global warming, these limited resources, and these kinds. So I logically went through this, and I kind of decided for myself, hey, as a living organism, as part of this larger collective of living organisms, it is my duty to go out there and figure out how I can keep us growing, evolving, and developing further. That That is why... That's why I think I've been I've been successful because it's no longer about me. Then I'm I'm tying my life and my my mission for the future with something that is so much larger than me, and it can only help me. Like life can only be like, oh, here is my baby, and my baby wants to help my other babies, right? And so when you were saying, I, I think you said something about like um, just cosmic entities and cosmic energies, most especially that for me. Align myself with life and choosing life in every single situation because I have to make choices in which, for example, I was working at a factory, right? I wasn't making enough money there to pay Paco to build, you know, to, to buy him all the models to build this city. But I chose to invest in that instead of buying, let's say, like shoes or, or gold chains or trying to look the way, the way social media would want me to think I should look like. Um, and, and those sacrifices at the time I made because it was in relation to this has to happen, right? So we all live in a, like, we all look up to the world, we see the wars, we see all these governments and all these corporations and all these powerful entities grasping to the power that they're losing. You have to sit down and ask yourself, I have skills. I am a conscious being who's filled with life and energy. What can I do to be able to bring forth the positive, the, 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 literally life has given you so much energy, so much vitality, so much, so much. You, you are mentioning the purpose that you are seeing beyond, and it's all about the beyond. Uh, what gives you energy. A lot of people are abusing their energy and their own energy by addictive compulsory behavior by purchasing or by satisfying the norms of society and parents. And you also were there. It is a moment of an epiphany maybe that you are 
able to see far ahead and something that you are not working only for yourself, you are working for humanity. Mm -hmm. It's going beyond yourself, beyond the egoistic uh, need for yourself, uh, having the enough money and retiring and looking for pleasure every day on the beach. Yeah. You, are, <laughs> you are preferring to use this energy to multiply it and to create something that will resonate and will create drive to other mm -hmm. and this is abandoning even you more as you are focusing on the beyond mm -hmm. so it's very much here about the beyond yeah. it's like above the limit yeah. and it's about it's through the purpose the purpose just rising you up and then you are welcome to not just to be a dreamer one day is a peace in the world so what you are doing for the peace in the world just praying and going to church god will do everything for me mm -hmm. No, also the life that God gave us is for creating uh, things in our head, in our hands, head, and even by chances that we are discovering. Mm -hmm. And part of my journey is breaking the barriers of my old program by disconnecting from the status quo, norms, and normal society, find a home, get married, sit here, and all this. By moving through cultures, by choosing not to comply to the social norms, I'm creating my new norm, and through this I'm seeing what is needed, and if me not losing all the money I had when I was your age, I wouldn't even care about astrofinance and about predicting because I needed to lose in order to be aware about the social problems because I could be very comfortable right now and not caring with all what is happening in the world. Sometimes we need to go to a place that is uncomfortable. Oh, you hit it. You see, the thing is, um, what, what, what do I go to the gym? Why, why subjugate myself to such tough like moments? Like I like using the gym as an example because the gym... Um, it's a very clear example. It's painful. It's hard. I wake up early in the morning. Um, I go to the gym and it's painful. It sucks. Like, you know, as much as I enjoy it, I understand that it's a painful experience, but I, I prefer that kind of pain over the pain of me feeling bad, feeling bad that I don't look good, feeling bad that my body doesn't feel like I want to be part of it, right? So there's that, there's that sense of self-responsibility. You said something interesting too that I wanted to tie into this, um, the journey, right? Um, this moment um, to the person watching serves as the call to action. So there's a, there's a story um, structure that is called the hero's journey. And in the hero's journey, um, it starts off when the world is ordinary, right? The world is like the way it is and it's always been. And then something happened. It's called the inside, inciting incident. It's when something in your world changes and you can't go back to how things used to be. This can serve like that for you because what you just said is that you're going through this journey and you're changing the way you think about the world. And and that means that you're going through your hero's journey multiple times. You start enough and now let's say you've been here for a while, your ordinary world has become this state of living for the past three weeks. You're about to change that. So there's an inciting incident that is going to change you. And now you're going to go through all these challenges again, and then you're going to come back up and you're going to be at a point in which you have grown, you have evolved, you've changed, and now you're going to go back to the world being ordinary. And then you have to do it again. And I prefer that because it's, it's better than me sitting down and being depressed about how terrible the world is. Everyone will tell you how terrible the world is. Now you have to decide for yourself, am I going to do something about it, right? That, that's different. You're making the decision. You, you're making it your personal responsibility to improving not just yourself, right? Like going to the gym and doing those hard things to improve yourself, but also to improve the world of the people around you. By you going to the gym, you are working on things that you still don't, don't see. You, you, it's not something that you can already enjoy from it. You just enjoy the process of creating it mm -hmm. by sharing it with people, finding talents that will connect with this project. And this is part of your garden right now that is a real agricultural ritual that until you will see all this forest really grown, yeah. it's a very hard job and with a lot of faith and trust in yourself and the discipline what just before we end because we, we need to close yeah, this <laughs> uh, sometimes people with discipline feeling so much responsibility on their back 
to carry the old heavy shit of, pa of the past, like they had their job and will continue because otherwise, I pre like you said for the gym, I prefer to, you know, to suffer now, but that my family will not suffer from not having food. But instead of channeling the energy to find a new job or to find other thing, you know, it's like, there are many levels of this, yeah, how people can excuse themselves with what isn't working for them that is satisfying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at the end of the day, you need to look in the mirror and to say, do I happy with the result? Okay, so I have a good salary, but I'm look as shit, I'm depressed. Is it, is it good? Mm -hmm. Or I'm going to gym, it's shit, but I'm so satisfied with what is creating in my life. So it all yeah. comes to the bottom line, I'm happy with it, mm -hmm. healthy with it, mm -hmm. and happy and healthy should come aligned. Yeah. <laughs> it's life. Like, literally, it's what... That's what life is about, man. Like life, life is about growing stronger, growing, growing better, evolving. That's literally, as, as a representative of life, so are you. <laughs> I used to ask people, hey, uh, what does life want you to do? And no one would be able to answer that question because no one thinks of it from that perspective. They don't think of it as... And really before we end, in your gym, are you taking specific supplements or you are just no, working I'm hard? Just natural. It's all uh, natural. Protein, I take some creatine and some pre-workout, that's it. Um, I take some vitamins like omega-3, uh, vitamin C. But look at this, you are drinking a very... Show what you are drinking now. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's not a nap, this is not It's full of sugar. Yeah. <laughs> I, I will not touch this, this monster. Yeah, it is. But <laughs> for you it's okay. I thought yeah. that you are not using uh, sugar. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, thank you. Um, thank you for having me on here, man. Um, I really love the conversations we have because, um, you know, I've met you and... and the vibe was just, it was on point. Like we became friends immediately because like we were out there yeah. listening to the water and yeah. like- We we'll belong just... to another sea, to another star <laughs> in the future. I was, yeah. I was born before time and you are in the right time maybe now. Yeah. Oh, from, the, from, from the future, but in the right time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a, it took a long time. <laughs> um, yeah. But I'm so happy to be here, so thankful. So thank you for you for watching and making it this far into the video. Um, hopefully, you know, hopefully you enjoyed, hopefully you learned something. If you have any questions, um, leave them in the comment section below. Um, thank you for having me. Um, it's a pleasure. So, I'll, uh, um, pleasure. yeah. A pleasure. Virgo and Gemini ruled by Mercury. Nice communication. Hopefully you liked it. And I'll see you in the next video item. Bye. Follow the links below. Mm -hmm. Bye. Bye. -bye. <laughs>